hopefully do we'll hopefully do some reading of Chaitanya Charitamrita. How does that sound? We have Sarvatma back with us today, um, all the way from Gita Nagri. <laughs> <clears throat> How come you're not cooking today, Sarva? There is a retreat um, called BMS, Body, Mind, and Spirit, where mm -hmm. they bring 100 people who have no contact with Krishna consciousness. They don't know anything except that there is a yoga, meditation, vegetarian retreat in some remote farm. Mm -hmm. And it's quite successful. By the end of a three-day retreat, people walk away with beads and <laughs> books. Uh, yeah. It's quite amazing. So since there is a lot going on, we are just staying home. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. Oh, I'm seeing Gormitra's video film. He's showing... Uh, Sadhana Ashram. We are on Russia. We have working day. Yeah. Amataji is here. Nadia Nimai Prabhu. Yeah. Amataji with kids. Uh huh. Very good. Nice, nice. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my God. Timidandasya. Gyanan jana shalakaya chakshuran militam yena tasmahe shi gurave namaha shi chaitanya manobishtam stapitam yena mutale svayam rupa kadamahyam darati svapadantikam vande ham shi guru shi yutta padakamalam shi gurun vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatang Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pradhan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nivesesha Shunyavani Paschatya Deshatarine Manchakalpatar Vyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patitanam Pabanevyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Nama He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshvari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamahami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasari, Gaura Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, so our, um, let's first see about translation. Any translation going on? Um, Good Maharaj, Hare Krishna, mm -hmm. uh, Dharma Gupta phoned me just before the, um, uh, our Sangha to say that he he will be a little bit late uh, mm -hmm. with setting up the translation channels and, mm -hmm. and he will come after we finish with the song. 
Achoo. Okay. I guess that mm, maybe that also answers. Oh, I did close that. Oh. Okay, good. All right. So be it. So no translation for you who want translation for our discussion of the song. Uh, but uh, after that, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sometimes I think maybe I should invest in a Zoom channel myself, a Zoom account so as not to depend on others. Well, we'll see. Okay. Um, 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 yes. Let's go to our song. Where is our song? It's here somewhere. Last week's song, first of all. I must say, um, there's so much similarity now in these songs of Naratam. It seems like he has one thought, and that is, when can I go to Vrindavan and stay there and have darshan of Radha and Krishna and serve them um, directly or... Mm, or almost directly. And uh, yeah, he often links this to what he says in the beginning of the uh, first verse of last week's song, when will I renounce all sense gratification? Hmm. When will I accept only, yes, and then when will I accept only a water pot and torn garment? <laughs> when will I constantly sing Lord Krishna's holy names? When will I go to the groves of Raja and make my permanent residence there? When will I attain ecstatic love for Krishna? So that kind of summarize, summarizes the rest of the song. And um, one thing I notice about this from last week and also from this of this week, which we can go to now, is um, it's all very, shall we say, tactile. It's all about being in a very, what seems like a very physical place uh, with, um, with earth and with water and uh, yeah, as we'll see, I won't, I won't linger. So we have verse number one. Maybe I should say stanza number one. I've been reading something um, sort of scholarly work about um, Vedic literature. And I noticed that um, the author, she always uses the word stanza for what we always call a verse. And she uses the word verse for one line um, of a stanza. But if I start saying stanza in our ISKCON society, everyone will think, what's wrong with this Swami? <laughs> All right. Hari Hari Kabe Hobo Brindavana Voshe Nirakibo. Noyone Jugala Rupa Rashi. Uh, I think you have all received, or some of you have received, the word for word translation of this from Avaduta Rai. So that you may find helpful. Uh, one second. Um, mm, 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 um, um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, translation of the first verse. O oh Lord Hari, Lord Hari, when will I become a resident of Rindavan? Uh, when will my own eyes, when with my own eyes, 
will I see the great beauty of the divine couple. Hmm. So, uh, uh, there's one word here. What was it? Oh, I have to go up here. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, behold, that word is nice. Okay, so again, addressing Hari, Hari, and then the question word, Kabe, Hava will be um, Brindavana Vase. When will I be a resident Vasa of Brindavan? And Nira Kibo, again, future tense, I will behold. Now, this word behold in English, it's, um, it's slightly old fashioned archaic, but it's very rich. It's very nice. Uh, it means, it means to see, but to see something in a, I would say in a somewhat meditative way, in a way which is somehow emotionally moving. And I think it's related to the English word hold. So, one is holding something um, as one is viewing. So it's a kind of seeing, holding. Uh, yeah, nirakibo. So I will behold uh, where? Nayane, in my eyes. What will I behold? Yugala Rupa Rashi. Uh, Rupa, of course, is form, and yugala means pair or two. And Rashi has, as I understand, the sense of an abundance or a richness. It's translated here, the great beauty. Um, it, it, I think it has a sense of uh, a heap, like a very much quantity of something. Rich quantity. Tyajiya shoyana shukko vichitra palanko kabe brajer dhulai dhusor habe onga. When will I renounce very comfortable sleeping arrangements and instead take rest on the ground of Vraja? So Tyajiya, having given up, Shayana Shuka, um, the, the happiness of, of lying down, Vichitra Palanka, a Palanka is uh, like a couch or a bed, and Vichitra means very charming. Kobe Brajer Dulai. Do sor habe anga. What was this? Do sor. Um, do sor dusty. In the dust and do sor dusty. Okay. Um, yes, when in the dust do lie of Raja, Rajera, do sor dusty habe anga. My angas, my body. Mm. Habe will become dhus or will become dusty, <laughs> will become covered with dust. Shad rasa bojana dure parihari kabe braje magiya kaibo madukari. When will I renounce materially palatable foodstuffs and simply eat whatever I can obtain by begging in the land of Raja? So um, what's translated here as palatable foodstuffs is shat rasa. Shat means six rasa, tastes. So uh, and bojana is 
food, um, what is consumed. So bojana food, which has six tastes, dure parihari, um, parihari to completely uh, reject, completely th uh, renounce, and dure is in the distance. So giving up far away, kove braje, uh, magia, having begged, um, kaibo madukari, I will eat madukari, I will eat what I have begged uh, by going door to door. And where will I do this? Braje, in Braja. So this verse uh, reminds me again, Sarvatma, you were telling us some weeks ago about when you first joined the devotees and the, or you first visited the devotees and the prasadam was so terrible. There and was you thought, only, only one ras. Only one what? Ras. Yeah, it was one. <laughs> it was one ras. And you and you were thinking, oh, this is very spiritual. I will be renounced like this. Why not? Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. But that, that was just me. <laughs> <laughs> and you ended up becoming uh, such an expert cook to make up for that first experience. <laughs> Maybe, if you say so. But actually, Prabhupada said, if you want to eat well, you learn how to cook. Right, that's right. <clears throat> okay, number four. Parikrama Korea Birabo Bone Bone Vishram Koribo Jai Jamuna Puline. When will I circumambulate the land of Braja Parikrama? Wandering from forest to forest. Birabo Bone Bone. When becoming fatigued, will I stop to rest on the shore of the Jamuna? Um, Puline means on the shore. And uh, Jai, I think, means to go. I will go. Let's see. Uh, we'll do, yeah, going. Vishrama. Vishrama means resting. There's a ghat, a, a shore on the Yamuna in Mathura called Vishram Ghat, uh, the place of rest, uh, because there's a pastime. Who was it who went to rest there? Did Krishna go to rest there? Uh, Shatrugna went to rest there. I forget. I think after killing the the uh, washerman, or yeah, I think after killing the washerman, he went to rest there. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Don't quote me on that. Uh, Sarvatma says. Okay. <laughs> Uvacha. Uvacha. Tapadura karibo shitalavam shivate. Kave kunje praveshibo vaishnavani kate. When will I find relief from the heat of midday by resting in the cooling shade of Vamshivata? When will I associate with the Vaishnavas in the groves of Vrinda? So, um, tapa means heat and Dura, distance, karibo shitalavam shibate. I will make shitala uh, coolness. <laughs> Our dogs here are greeting our guests. I think some guests are coming. Uh, Vamshivata is 
the tree called Mount Shivata. It's interesting. This one dog, um, there's three dogs here. And the oldest of them, named Mufa, uh, is quite old. And when the two younger dogs came, uh, the older dog became so enlivened. So now she does most of the barking around here. <laughs> she wasn't like that, and then she changed and people say dogs are not have no person personality. Animals have no soul. Tapadura Kuribo Shitalavam Shibote Kabe Kunje Prabhishibo Vaishnavanikate. Kabe when Kunje in um, the groves. Prabhishibo, I will enter. Vaishnava Nikate, near to Nikate, uh, the Vaishnavas. So that's interesting. It's not just about, you know, the Kunja and the Nikunja with Radha and Krishna, but it's um, being with the Vaishnavas in the Kunjas. And the last verse, Narottam Das, Kohe, Kori Parihara, Kobe Va, Amone, Amona Dasha, Hoibo, Hoibe, Amar. Narutam Das renounces the materialistic way of life and says, When will I attain the perfection of spiritual life? Oh. Okay, Narottam Das Kohe, he says, Kori Parihara, renounce, doing the renunciation. And then the question word, Kobe, when? Va Amon. Amon means kind of such uh, or this. Um, yeah, va means indeed. It's kind of emphasis word. In the Upanishads, oh, our guests also have a dog, a very small dog. And so now there are four dogs here. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, va. It just occurs to me, this va, I wonder if it's related to the uh, quite ancient Upanishadic vai. Uh, vai is also a kind of emphasis word. Kabe va amona dasha. Dasha means state or position. Hoibe amar. When will this position uh, be mine? When indeed will this position be mine? to be a Vaishnava, to be uh, in a spiritual dasha, the spiritual position. Okay, let's give it a, a bit of musical interpretation. And for this, we will have to make one small adjustment. Whoops. But what happened? That goes away. There. Okay. Original sound for musicians is on. Okay, this, uh, this song is in simple payar form instead of tripadi. We've been getting tripadi verses like the, uh, the Guru Puja song, also from Narutam. But now we have payar, so this is quite easy. <laughs> Oh, 
Hari Hari Kabe Haba Brindavana Basi Nirakhi Bonayane Jugala Rupa Rashi Hari Hari Kabe Haba Brindavana Basi Nirakhi Bonayane Jugala Rupa Rashi Tajiya Shayana Sukha Vichitra Palanka Kabe Vrat Kabe Vratche Dulai Dusora Habe Anga Tajiya Shayana Sukha Vichitra Palanka Kabe Vratche Dulai Dusora Habe Anga Shadrasha Bhojan Dure Pari Hare Kabe Brache Magiya Taibo Madhukhari Shadrasha Bhojan Dure Pari Hare Kabe Brache Magiya Taibo Madhukhari Hare Parikrama Koriya Beri Bhavane Mani Vishrama Kori Bhajai Jamuna Puline Parikrama Koriya Beri Bhavane Mani Vishrama Kori Bhajai Jamuna Puline Tapadura Kori Bhoshi Tala Bhamsi Bhate Kabe Kunje Kabe Kunje Prabheshi Bho Vaishnavat Nikate Tapadura Kori Bhoshi Tala Bhamsi Bhate Kabe Kunje Prabheshi Bho Vaishnavat Nikate Narotama dasa kohe hari Narotama dasa kohe kori tari hari Kabeva hemona dasa hoi be amada Narotama dasa kohe kori tari hari Kabeva hemona dasa hoi Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ho.
Sheila Narottam Das Thakur Ijai. And some more about Narottam Das Thakur from the glorious life of Sheila Narottam Das Thakur by Her Grace Sitala Dasi. We were reading last week. Narottam has been listening as a small boy to a sadhu named, what's his name, Krishna Das Babaji, perhaps. And uh, he's been telling, the sadhu has been telling about Lokanath Goswami and how Lokanath has left everything and gone to uh, meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Navadvip. And what's the first thing that Mahaprabhu says to uh, Lokanath, he says, I have a job for you. <laughs> Go to Vrindavan and uh, rediscover the 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 uh, the uh, Leela Stanas, the places of of Krishna's pastimes. And initially Lokanath is broken hearted because he wants to be with Mahaprabhu. That's why he came to Navadvi. Uh, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu convinces him that this is what will please him most uh, because Vrindavan is uh, it's the place of Krishna. It is so important to revive this place of Krishna's pastimes uh, for the Vaishnav community. So he's been hearing this with, uh, Narottam's been hearing this with great um, fascination. And then uh, his father comes in, uh, and Krish, Raja Krishnananda, and says, it's time for bed. <laughs> so then the next scene is... Uh, that Krish, Krishnanand, King Krishnananda's uh, wife, the queen, Narayani, is worried. And why is she worried? Because she's noticing that little Narottam is too much absorbed in these spiritual things that he's, he doesn't want to you know, play with, uh, with the other kids. All he wants to do is... Um, is perform puja and hear Krishna Das to hear the stories that he's telling. And he thinks, you know, I mean, it's nice. He's he's uh, having this spiritual attraction, but uh, but not too much. After all, he is uh, the son of a king and he has uh, to take up responsibilities um, in course of time. And then his father comes in, and uh, the mother and the father, and they, they discuss what to do about this. And the conclusion is what you might expect. <laughs> they say, let's get him married. <laughs> uh, if he's married, then uh, he will forget about all of this. Mm. Okay, it's a, so it's a good it's a good tactic. Yeah, yeah, it's a um, tried and true method, I guess. <laughs> when I was uh, doing the research at the Radharman Temple in two thousand and one uh, for my doctoral dissertation, I met one gentleman, a local. Bridge Basi. He spoke nice English and he was a very, um, very nice person. And, and I, um, he invited me to his home. So I went and he introduced me to his family. There were his wife and there were, I think, two daughters and maybe someone from the older generation. Um, yeah, there were a few people there. And uh, 
So he was introducing me to everyone. And then he also pointed to a photograph of his son uh, who was not with them. And this son was, mm, I think he said, 12 years old. And so where is your son? Oh, he is now in, I think he said, in Bengal. And he has joined an ashram there as, as a brahmachari. He's, he has renounced uh, the world, and he's become a sadhu. And the father was actually very happy. He was, very, he was proud of his son that uh, he has uh, taken up the life of a sadhu. I, I was very struck by that. Okay, the scene shifts back to Narottam. He's lying in his bed, uh, and his mind is spinning. I cannot bear to hear another word about property management or collecting taxes. <laughs> uh, I have absolutely no interest in these things. I just want to dedicate my life fully to the service of Sri Chaitanya. Mahaprabhu. And he's longing to be in Vrindavan, like the songs, all of these songs that we have been singing, which he has composed. It would be interesting to know uh, when he wrote those songs. Um, it always sounds like he is writing them from somewhere other than Vrindavan. Um, so he's expressing this hankering. He wants to associate with Mahaprabhu's associates in Vrindavan. <clears throat> and he's thinking, I have to go. I have to go there. And he's, uh, he's staying awake. <clears throat> and then at one point, he makes the decision I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go to Vrindavan. Um, but uh, after some time, he falls asleep. And while he's asleep, he has a vision. And the vision is that Sri Nityananda Prabhu appears before him. His face is more beautiful than millions upon millions of moons. Uh, he has a a tall, strong, heroic stature. His hands, arms, legs are beautifully formed. His eyes resemble lotus flowers, lotus petals. Here it says flowers. Um, wearing golden earrings, armlets, and bangles because Nityananda Prabhu, uh, as an avaduta, he, at some point, was given golden ornaments uh, by these Suvarnavanic uh, goldsmiths who had become his disciples. <laughs> and so he wore them. <laughs> uh, he was supposed to be a renunciant. Yes, why not? He's so renounced, he can wear all of this and not be attached. So uh, he's appearing now to Narottam, who says to Narottam, go at once to the Padmavati River to bathe. Padma, Padmavati Devi has been keeping a gift for you, and she will deliver it when you come. She has been waiting for you. And then the Lord disappeared. Uh, so this is happening in the middle of the night. So he jumps out of bed. Uh, he slips out of the palace. He goes to the uh, river, the Padmavati. Uh, but he's 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 afraid that he'll be he'll he'll be seen by household servants. Uh, oh, so it says he climbs out of a window. 
<laughs> so he manages to squeeze out of a window onto the roof, uh, and then he slides down the eaves and drops quietly to the ground. <laughs> so this is before the sun has arisen, and so there are no guards. They're still, they're all sleeping. He runs uh, toward the Padma Vati, and he's chanting the whole way. When he reaches the bank, he bows down in the moist earth. And as we remember, um, there's been a warning to, um, after, just after his birth by the astrologer that he should not go to the river because something bad will happen. So his father has made sure he never goes to the Padma River. Now he's going to the Padma or Padmavati River. He wades in and he calls out the name Goranga. And as he's wading in, the water rises <laughs> higher and higher. And then uh, waves of the river are blowing over. And then Narottam sees the goddess Padmavati standing before him. And of course, he's quite shocked. And he stares at her and Padmavati Devi smiles and says, before you were born, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left his divine love in my care and instructed me to give it to a boy named Narutam, whose touch would make my waters rise in the same way they did when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself came here. Clearly, you are the rightful recipient of this most extraordinary gift. I have been waiting for a very long time for your visit. Now, please take this topmost treasure. Saying this, Padmavati moves toward Narutam with outstretched hands, holding what appears to be a radiant golden lotus flower. And at that moment, with no warning, she disappears. And Narutam is... Lummoxed, we might say. That's not in the book. Uh, and he sees this golden lotus transformed into a luminous golden colored boy. Hmm. Who was that boy? It was none other than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, who danced toward him and entered his body. Wow. That's cool. Narutam felt Mahaprabhu's essence engulf him. <laughs> and he became powerless in his grip uh, of the Lord's ecstasy. And he calls, go, Ranga, go, Ranga. As uh, the love of Goranga fills all of his limbs. At this point, Narutam's darker complexion became lighter. And he took on a beautiful golden color. Uh, his skin slackens, it becomes looser. He shivers and he trembles uncontrollably. He can't contain his emotions. He staggers out of the water. He's laughing. He's crying. He's singing. He's dancing furiously on the uh, bank of the Padmavati River. And he is oblivious to everything around him, being completely lost in the ecstasy of prema. 
Well, then he gets called back to external consciousness by the sound of his father's frantic shouts. <laughs> frantic. You know this word frantic? Uh, desperate. It's like intense fear. Naru, Naru, where are you? Look, there's someone over there. It doesn't look like Narutam. Oh, my dear Lord, what has happened to my son? <laughs> now there's a big crowd of people rushing toward him with torches. <clears throat> his mother, his mother's voice is there. She's hysterical. And she says, it is Naru. Can't you recognize your own son? <laughs> um, yeah, she embraces him, kisses him. Naru, Naru, why did you sneak off like this? Why didn't you tell us where you were going? We were so frightened when you f we found your room empty. We searched everywhere for you. I was frantic. And then she says, wait, what happened to you? <clears throat> you look strange. What happened to your skin? Are you all right? And Narutam says, I, I, I'm fine. <laughs> and uh, hmm. he tried to pull away from his mother and he was yelling, go Ranga, go Ranga. And tears were streaming down his eyes. And he danced around the crowd of confused relatives and friends. And, of course, Krishnananda, the king, is also flummoxed. What's going on? Uh, it's as if he is possessed by a ghost, he says. <clears throat> I've heard a terrible Brahma Rakshasa lives in that tamarind tree over there. Perhaps he has entered Naru, Naru's body. Let's get him home. Uh, and then he grabs Narutam. Narayani, please stop this, Narutam. Come home with us now. They managed to get their son home and into his bed. Srila Narutam Das Thakur Ki Jai. How old is Narutam then? Well, we don't get any specifics like that. Um, you know. Um, Must be just they're, they're, a teenager, right? Yeah, they're thinking of him. They're thinking of his marriage. So that makes me think he's uh, perhaps a young teenager. Um, yeah. And, of course, marriage could happen very young in Indian culture, traditional Indian culture. Um, Gandhi was married, I think, when he was 13 years old. His wife was also 13 years old. Uh, that was in Gujarat. Um, I don't know how old... Srila Prabhupada was when he was married. 16? Uh, no, I don't remember. I think his wife was 11 or 12. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <clears throat> right. So, again, welcome to all of you who have joined since we first started. Uh, always good to see you all. And... Uh, Oh, I wanted to ask, um, Sita Rani, are you here? Um, it's not. 
They're not in alphabetic order this time. Okay. I had a small question for her. Yes. Um, first order of business is to request all of you to offer prayers to the Lord for Shimati Narahari Mataji, who is presently in Kolkata in a hospital where she has had a heart operation after apparently fainting in Mayapur, um, having had some, I don't know if it would be called heart arrest or something like this. She collapsed apparently and was rushed to Calcutta. She's uh, undergone surgery apparently already this morning. So uh, we want to wish her the best. For those of you who don't know, not. Narahari is uh, one of the pillars of the Singachalam temple community. She's been there since day one, since before day one. She's been with the devotees. And uh, she's been cooking and serving uh, Nrsingadev. And before that, Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohan for so many years. And uh, she's just with her. Fortunately, Nandi Mukhi is with her. So um, that we're hopeful uh, that uh, something will be uh, fixed. <laughs> so there was a, some, some technical issue with the heart. I mean, this is, you know, heart's a serious thing. Uh, so prayers are requested. Um, and the next thing I thought to say a word about is yesterday, according to the Christian tradition, was what in English they call Good Friday, what in Polish they call, I think, Wielka Piątek, uh, Great Friday. And uh, tomorrow is Easter, Easter Sunday which for us as small children simply meant rabbits and eggs and chocolate. That's basically what we understood about uh, this festival. <laughs> but of course, uh, in the Christian tradition, it, uh, it's highly significant as uh, it's a celebration of the, um, the, the, the raising, the resurrection, they call it uh, of the of the the what we want to say. Prabhupada would say, "Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> Lord Jesus." He would often refer in that way. Um, and uh, so, this is a, a key moment in um, in Christian understanding. And I think it's uh, something we can also celebrate in a general sense of uh, it's a celebration of, we can say, transcendental renewal. Um, it's perhaps no accident that it occurs in the springtime. So from the perspective of nature, everything is sort of returning from from uh, the slumber and the cold and the ice of winter and so on. Uh, and so it's a kind of affirmation of life in general and more specifically an affirmation of, uh, of the Lord's presence with us. And we understand the Lord comes again and again and again and again. And we've just heard about Narottam um, becoming infused with Goranga and becoming completely mad uh, thereby. Um, and we can also uh, appreciate Goranga, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is the return, uh, the second coming, if you like, of 
Lord Krishna, but he's coming in a very special um in a very special mood of um the counterpart, the feminine counterpart uh, of of Krishna, but he's doing this in also in a in a mood of uh, renunciation. So it's an it's really if if you think about it, and it's nice to think about <laughs> uh, the 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 whole theology of who is. Lord Chaitanya, what is he all about? Uh, is is incredibly uh, rich and profound, and uh, but also joyful. And I think this is what I found sort of missing in, uh, at least in most aspects of what I experienced of the Christian tradition. I'm sure. Uh, Christians would disagree. They would say, no, there's lots of joyfulness. And especially they will say Easter uh, is an expression of that. But in any case, um, our, our tradition, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, um, our Eastern Savior, <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, um, is, uh, is full of joyfulness. But what sort of joyfulness? It's not a kind of sentimental, um, uh, false or superficial joyfulness. It's one which goes all the way to the core of the heart in such a way that it also includes uh, the deepest of uh, feelings of pain. Um, but this pain is the feeling of the absence of the Lord, separation from the Lord, um, the combination of that and uh, of uh, the anandam buddhivardhanam, the ever-expanding joyfulness of Sankirtan and uh, viraha bhava viraha bhakti is quite astonishing. Um, yeah, and in connection with that, sort of in a tangential way, um, I was uh, sharing a link to a video. Um, did did you all receive that? And did some of you uh, see this video? Dear Lalita is nodding. Some others of you are nodding. So I I also came I came across this link and I watched it and I confess I was I was moved I felt like wow this is really something how these people are uh, being um, the, the these uh, these these women uh, widows and their children are undergoing this incredible ordeal and as a result uh, they're coming out uh, having recovered something which they had apparently which they had uh, which they had lost because of having lost uh, their husbands and their father fathers in this war but um, there's lots of things one could say about that in relation to uh, Krishna consciousness, I'm sure. And I don't want to be the only one to, <laughs> to talk about it. And therefore, I wanted to see if any of you who have uh, seen that have any thoughts, any reflections, um, whatever. Don't all speak at once, please. <laughs> Hare Krishna. We never have that problem. Anyone, or should I ask someone? Um, e yes, Charlotte. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna devotees. Um, Hare Krishna. Yeah, I watched... Um, and I'm, I made some notes um, 
I don't want to go on and on. But, um, yeah, it was it was quite complex actually to understand because um, first of all, yeah, it, it was very moving and an explanation of people's suffering in, in the world and that seem seemingly by um, the war that one kind of person had caused so much suffering for others. But it made me think that when I've heard people talk about war before and they equate it with um, uh, meat eating, so that's where the violence kind of stems from. So there's like there was like a lack of knowledge um, about the soul of every living entity and what we understand through Krishna consciousness about karma and reincarnation. And they also mentioned things about the soul being shattered, which we um, we know not to be the case. So it seemed that this suffering is it's the emotional heart that that's getting shattered by the, the losses. Um, and then there's also the issue of being nationalist and being on the bodily platform. Um, but the, I found it there was a recognition of there being danger at every step, and uh, all those lives had been lost and they were uh, climbing up different um, structures that and they kept making the point that it was very safe to climb these structures but that's not actually true because that's it's still a material climb and um, when Krishna calls you it it's your time to go um, but the climbing this rope together made um, me think about chanting as the rope that we use to to actually uh, get out of the world um and they mentioned things like community courage and responsibility so there were a lot of mention of positive qualities that made me think about the uh devotee qualities that we try to develop um and there was like a wanting to reach for god but just not having the the knowledge and the physical activities we did help them the shift the emotions uh, and working with the sort of grief and anger to make something constructive out of what um, could be just something constructive, what can be destructive, um, and pushing through the emotions, using the physical activity to push through the emotions. Um, and I also thought that these are children and relatives of warriors, so that physical push, that heroism that they'd suddenly lost was quite Im important to them. And then just, but the, the the attachment was very strong, the family attachment. Um, and yeah, that the instructor said that he was also receiving a healing through what he was he was doing as well. Um, but they were very much looking to the next generation to, to sort, sort it out, the children to do the climb and sort it out, which tends to happen without the right knowledge. So yeah, there were just a few thoughts that I... Mm watching it Hi, Krishna. Very, <laughs> very good please speak slowly oh sorry <laughs> sorry no. i'm trying not to take up too much time so i i do talk a bit fast apologies <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, uh yeah okay thank you charlotte nice points um who else who else saw the film Hands. Ananda Mayi, any thoughts? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, I am living just uh, close to Ukraine, so they are just abroad to me. So it was uh, really intense uh, when this uh, war happened. And um, I was checking when it happened um, some information. And uh, I remember one uh, man who was driving because uh, they sent many buses to Ukraine to bring people from there. And um, millions of people in Poland now from there. Um, they are educated, the children, and um, yeah, it's very intense. Even if I'm talking about this, this energy is coming to me. 
and sometimes uh, I remember one um, driver who was uh, talking about this trip to Kiev and back with his uh, um, families uh, with the wives and uh, and the children. There were buses only of the women and the children. And he usually he was driving there um, just uh, to bring them to Poland for work for something um, before. But when he was driving them at that time, um, there was the silence. All the trip was only silence. With many hours they were driving in the car. So, um, there are many things uh, in my mind how how this all works, so how this opens the, the people in Poland were completely crazy to help them, all of them. Uh, they, they organize many things for them. Uh, even uh, here when I am living in a small uh, city, they have two schools and many children from the Ukraine are here. Mm -hmm. Adults, and they, they stay here. And they are helping them so much. So this is this external um, point what I see here. Yeah. Yeah. And the film was uh, really, really touching. I was thinking uh, in a form of uh, helping each other um, as a community because mm -hmm. they treated them like community with some suffering. And uh, I was thinking in the context of our our movement and how how we could also support each other in many mm -hmm. ways. That was his his um, way of presenting this and uh, helping was really uh, I I I always was thinking about Americans how they they have this shakti to help to to bring some um uh, some issue uh, when there is some some something needed so they have such, such shakti and um <laughs> this, this was this americans was can also bring lots of trouble yeah that's another point but they, they have some uh, some some um uh, something is there mm. it was really nice to think about the, this way of helping each other, um, <laughs> cooperating also. Mm -hmm. Many things uh, we can say, I don't want to yeah. say. Okay. No, these are, it's interesting you're mentioning being close to the border. Um, yeah, there were some uh, in a very short time, some three mi million refugees came into Poland uh, from from Ukraine. So it was uh, affecting the whole Polish country. Uh, I don't know how many of them are still in Poland. I think many of them either moved further west or they went back to Ukraine. Uh, but uh, it was... But there's... <laughs> Anyway, that's another subject. It's quite interesting contrast between how they were welcoming people from Ukraine and how they were keeping out just a few months before uh, the people trying to come in from Belarus. Yeah, yeah. that's the, the point. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so, because this politic is always the yeah, political. Yeah. Because uh, the awareness is close to the Russia to Putin actually, so yeah. they they have that idea. So, yeah, thank you. So one one thing that struck me is um, 
the the process that uh, was shown of doing this climbing, um, it was intended as a process of emotional healing from the trauma of the war and of lo loss to overcome grief uh, and anger, especially for one woman, it was anger. And the, and the process involved um, finding cur courage. And the point was made in the beginning that courage does not mean one is free from fear. It means that one faces the fear. And so they're all given arrangements, facilities, encouragement, support, and um, sort of hands-on demonstration of how to act, uh, how it's possible to overcome uh, the fear in order to gain courage, and as a result of that courage, to overcome grief and uh, anger. So that that reminded me something I've some of you have uh, are familiar. I I've given a seminar I call Shanti Shanti Shanti, in which I kind of bar borrowed from this sort of self help method called Sedona, and I sort of Krishnaized how to manage emotions um, by a process of consciously letting go. So there's kind of, in that system, there's nine categories of emotions um, from the most dense, what we would call tamasic, uh, to the most uh, um, clear, which we could call sattvic. And on the bottom of these, the lowest is apathy, the sense of I cannot, I cannot do it, I cannot be whatever. And the next step up from there with slightly more or possibly a lot more energy is grief. And then above grief is fear and above fear is, um, is des desire and then anger and then pride. And then comes courage. And from courage, there can be acceptance. And with acceptance comes shanti, comes peace. And I find this a very useful scheme because it helps us to sort of map our emotions to recognize that if I want to experience, if I want to practice bhakti, I have to get all the way to the top, to peace. Um, the apathy, the grief, the everything else there is not going to help. It's going gonna, it's gonna to block. It's going to hinder. So one way I thought of this film is, okay, there's no talk about um, bhakti in the film. There's no, in what they're doing, there's no... Uh, talk about Krishna, but uh, but still, I had a strong sense they're really doing something valuable for these people, and whether they know it or not, they're bringing them closer to where bhakti can happen, uh, where one could become receptive to uh, to to the teachings to Krishna's words, to uh, the Vaishnavas' words, or to their prasada. <laughs> yeah, so that was my thought. Um, anyone else who watched it? Who else watched? Dira Lalita. Uh, yes. She's going to shift from translating. Okay. Uh, you may have to switch something else because we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes. Oh, you can. Oh, okay. I think Dharma Gopta is helping here um, uh, invisibly. <laughs> um, 
well, I, thank you so much for sharing this, Gurmaj. Um, I, I was just thinking how um, how uh, the body and mind is very related, um, especially if one is not on a on a platform of pure of purity yet, not self-realized soul, and they were all afraid to go through um, this climbing because they're afraid they're going to fall. <laughs> Some of the youngsters were even shouting to, no, no, I don't want to do it. So that's all that fear of, of the actual height. Um, um, so that this uh, uh, gentleman, uh, the, the, the soldier from America, who also suffered that great trauma in Iraq. Um, so I'm just thinking how when the body goes through um, fearful climbing or, I don't know, being alone somewhere, locked in the dark, or maybe um, being alone. I was going through that as well, walking from the manor to home, but pouring down rain, uh, pitch black, <laughs> um, you know, alone, uh, thinking, you know, being, being afraid. But then when you come to the other side, and that fear sort, sort of, sort of uh, turns into something else turns into so, sort of success, turns to um, um, to see your, your own situation in, in a different light. And that, that process of healing, what I was thinking how uh, trauma and healing, a trauma brings people together. So this soldier had different trauma. He had his friends killed in Iraq and and he said himself he was completely broken within emotionally, even though physically he could do anything, but emotionally he was completely broken. And also uh, uh, this uh, 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 women with children, also they were also in, in totally broken emotionally and they were in pain. And sort of that trauma got them together and they were healing, he healing themselves together. That's really, um, so compassionate that this person who who was completely emotionally broken wanted to help he could understand uh pain of these other people and he didn't just watch oh look at those people in pain i'm in pain and then everything stops there no he was he did something about it he helped them um climb and overcome their fears which was connected with the with the pain, I suppose. I suppose some of the that pain um, got elevated as you were talking about these nine uh, levels of emotion, mm. and that, that's what I saw. And I, I think also the the compassion and kindness when we feel that somebody suffers, we do naturally want to help, but sometimes we don't know how. Mm. That's what I got from that uh, video. Yeah, thank you. That's good. Um, yeah, the point of uh, doing something for others kind of despite or because of one's own pain. That's, I think, interesting, which to me that uh, reminds me I've been... Um, as you know, most of you, I'm writing this book about yoga and animal ethics. So I've been working on a section um, in which I'm discussing the the Buddhist tradition of what's called the Brahma Vihara. It's not unique to Buddhism. It's kind of hinted at in our in our literature also, uh, but it becomes. Um, the Buddhists seem to develop develop it the most. Brahma Vihara, uh, it's it's a meditation practice. You uh, of four four different things, four moods. Uh, one is um, Maitra, which is usually just translated as friendliness, but is often translated as loving kindness. But one scholar practitioner Buddhist says that's wrong. It should be goodwill. And the second was is compassion. The third is modita, 
karuna then modita modita is joyfulness uh, which means being joyful at the happiness of others and the the fourth is uh, upeksha which uh, can be misunderstood as kind of indifference um, but it's it's more like an aloofness uh, so we have we have this also in our tradition and it's also in the yoga sutras uh, very briefly mentioned but i've been exploring this and what's interesting in the buddhist tradition is the meditation is you you take any one of these so you start with goodwill and you think about the feeling or you allow yourself to feel um, good goodwillness uh, toward someone who is close to you um, and you you uh, you sort of become very conscious of that feeling and then you take the next step which is you extend it out to someone that you would be um, indifferent to someone neutral and then you extend it out to someone who is inimical to you um, i want to use this in relation to animals that's why i'm dealing with it but um what I'm saying here is that this film reminded me of that. It's uh, the the notion of compassion being extended out, uh, sort of stretching the envelope, extending the the boundary. And I think that is, I think it's the essence of Sankirtan. I think that's what Sankirtan boils down to, in a way. Uh, Padma Malini. Hi, Krishna um, hey. Just, I didn't get to see the video, but uh, one thing when some of you were speaking about the connection between trauma and the body, um, it's just there's one book uh, a fellow yogi suggested to me some years ago. Um, it's this one here. Um, the body holds the score looking at um, PTSD and how it's... Um, physically absorbed by the body and the uh, therapist who wrote the book uh, toward the end he talks about how different therapies have been very successful and uh, particularly looking at yoga and how that's helped different um, people who've experienced trauma in a range of uh, circumstances to begin to heal um so okay. just wanted to put that out there. Um, also just the sedona um, practice that you mentioned mm -hmm. when you mentioned that I was just thinking of the 12 step program if you've ever looked into that and links between bhakti and those processes or those yeah. steps I haven't myself um, looked with any um, focus to that I know I know there's uh, some devotees in Poland have been exploring that. And also there's a group in America who are doing, um, I forget what they're calling it, devotee Vaishnav recovery group or something. Um, I think they're applying some of those principles. Yeah. Well, what you mentioned before, this book and doing yoga to overcome trauma, that's that's interesting because I would think that's a lot easier and uh, yeah, safer <laughs> than climbing these mountains. Uh, yeah. If you see the film, you'll see it's uh, quite something what they were doing. And with just the little kids, five and six year old kids. Uh, but yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I uh, I kind of brought this in, like uh, I, I mentioned, I was thinking of this in relation to Easter. How is it in relation to Easter? Uh, it's maybe a bit of a stretch, but it's something about, I think, renewal and sort of a, getting a second, getting a second start, uh, a second chance. 
uh, the book, which is taken and done by the BBT, collected from Prabhupada's lectures or writings, the second a second chance. So this I thought is a interesting, uh, hmm, interesting project of how a second chance is being given to these uh, traumatized people. Right. Okay. Shall we read some Chaitanya Charitamrita? Say yes. Say yes. <laughs> All right. Um, we are still in Adi Lila Chapter Fourteen, and this is verse sixty-seven. We've uh, heard about the brief romantic, we could say romantic encounter between uh, Lakshmi Devi and uh, the young Ni Nimai, um, where just before this, Ni Nimai has been joking with uh, the other girls who are worshipping uh, Lord Shiva on the bank of the Ganga uh, in the hopes of getting a good husband. Um, incidentally, related to this uh, is I was hearing uh, a lecture from Amarendra about Mahaprabhu's about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and uh, he makes an interesting point with regard to uh, the Vastraharana Leela of Krishna. Krishna is stealing the clothes of the of the young gopis in Vrindavan. So one point he makes is that uh, several times in the description of that pastime. Shukadev Goswami is uh, using the word komarika, that they are very young. Everyone in that pastime are very young. They are, you know, five, six, maximum seven years old. There's one point he makes. Another point he makes is that uh, all of the gopis... Uh, they're they're going to the Yamuna to worship Katyayani. They do this in the um, Hemanta season, the cold season. And we may wonder why Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, of months, I am Hemanta. I am the month of December, the coldest time. Why doesn't he say I am the month of Kartik? The reason is because uh, Hemanta is the time the gopis are worshipping him in the hopes of uh, having him as their husband. And they're, worship, uh, they're not worshipping him, they're worshipping Katyayani. And they're worshipping Katyayani because their fathers are too shy to just ask Nanda Maharaj, uh, could your son, please marry my daughter. And they're too shy to ask. Why? Because um, Nanda Maharaj is in a, in, a, in a higher class than they are. They are also, they're all, they're all Vrijvasis and they're all um, Gowalas, but um, they're, you could say, small-scale Gowalas or S. Nanda Maharaj is, uh, you know, he's a big, like, Z Zamindar. So the adjustment is, all right, go and worship Katyayani. Maybe she can help. So Krishna responds to that. Uh, he understands their desire, and therefore he goes to the bank of the Yamuna at the moment when the girls have all taken off all their clothes to bathe, uh, and then he, you know, forces them. They have to come out 
of uh, the the Yamuna and stand before him completely naked. Why? Because not that he wants to, um, you know, gaze at them, but he wants to um, fulfill their desire to be their husband. Why? Only the husband can see the wife naked. So he sees their he sees them naked. That means they're his wives. <laughs> and then he gives back their clothes. Here, take your clothes. Get out of here. <laughs> Okay, um, so Nitai's Nimai has been playing, uh, joking with the girls, but now it's not joking. Now he's meeting Lakshmi, his eternal consort. And so when he says to her, worship me, uh, she immediately responds without any uh, argument. Lakshmi taro ange dila pushpa chandan Malikara maladiya korila bandan. On hearing the order of the Supreme Lord, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lakshmi immediately worshipped him, offering sandalwood pulp and flowers for his body, garlanding him with malika flowers and offering prayers. Okay. Um, And now comes a uh, a gentle reciprocation. Prabhu Taro Puja Paya Asite Lagila Shloka Pari Taro Bhav Angikara Koila. Being worshipped by Lakshmi, the Lord began to smile. He recited a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam and thus accepted the emotion she expressed. Uh, this is going to be chapter, okay. Canto 10, chapter 22, verse 25. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, Prabhupada in the purport is explaining what I was just explaining about Vastraharana. So here comes the verse. Um, Sankalpo vidita sadhyo bhavatinam mat archanam mayanamodita so sao satyo bhavitum arhati. My dear gopis, I accept your desire to have me as your husband and thus worship me. I wish your desire to be fulfilled because it deserves to be so. Okay, so um, to throw in a little technical term here, this could be called an example of intertextuality. <laughs> so this is a verse from another text from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Krishnadas Kaviraj is quoting that book, and he is telling us that this verse was spoken by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was quoted. So it's you could say it's Krishna quoting himself. If Mahaprabhu is Krishna, uh, then he can quote himself. And of course, he's doing so in a very interesting and appropriate context. Uh, but it suggests also that he, Mahaprabhu, is remembering the circumstance of uh, Vrindavan in which he spoke the verse originally. So the element of memory is, um, I think, super significant in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The whole, the whole pastime of Mahaprabhu appearing is it's all about a remembering of a past appearance and a kind of reenactment and completion of that pastime. Uh, 
Okay, and a motto lila kori do hegelo gari gambira chaitanya lila ke bujite pari. So this this is gonna end uh, this episode. After thus expressing their feelings to each other, Lord Chaitanya and Lakshmi returned home. Who can understand the grave pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So the word Gambhira uh, is translated as grave. Grave means having weight, having gravity, being uh, being deep, being profound. So one element of that profundity, we can say, is what we just mentioned, this memory of uh, the pastime in Vrindavan. Um, and certainly there are other dimensions of this. And then he concludes with his rhetorical question, Ke Bujite Pare, who is able to understand? <clears throat> Chaitanya Chapalo Daki Premesharvajan Shachi Jagannate Daki Nena Olahan. When the neighboring people saw the naughty behavior of Lord Chaitanya out of love for him, they lodged complaints with Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra. So this may also um, be echoing uh, Krishna Leela, specifically Damodar Leela, uh, the gopis, the Gopi ladies go to Yashoda to complain uh, because Damodar Krishna, little Krishna, is coming and and stealing their their yogurt and so on. Um, let's see if I can find an example of this from Surdas. Well. Oh, we can't find it so quickly. There's so many of these uh, songs from Surdas uh, that celebrate Damodar Leela. And in particular, I think there's at least one where uh, the gopis come complaining. Akodina Shachi Devi Putrede Partsiya Daribare Gela Putra Gela Palaya. One day, Mother Shachi went to catch her son, wanting to rebuke him, but he fled from the spot. Mm. Bartsia, rebuking. <clears throat> mm. So now, what's going to happen? Utishtagarte tak. The handir handira upar basiachen shukke prabhu deva bishambar. Although he is the maintainer of the entire universe, once the Lord sat upon some rejected pots in the pit where the remnants of food were thrown after the pots had been used for cooking. So this is going to be a similar. Um, pastime to what came not so much before uh, of uh, Nimai sitting in, in the yard and eating um, eating earth and his mother compl uh, complaining and they have an argument about it. Um, yeah, Prabhupada here mentions that uh, cooking would always be done in new pots. Now, when we think of pots, we usually think of metal pots. These would have been clay pots. Uh, and 
this is very much the standard in uh, many places in India, um, especially Brahminical, you don't reuse one of these pots. And you see this in the Jagannath temple. Uh, all of the preparations are made in these quite large, uh, quite large uh, ceramic pots, uh, clay pots, which are, I don't know, I guess they're, um, I don't, I don't know if they're baked at all before using. Must be baked, otherwise they would crack. Um, and they're just used once, and then they're served out. So, uh, Uchishtagarte, in the pit where the remnants of food were thrown, uh, Handir Upara Bosiachen. So, Bosiachen, he's sitting um, on these pots in the place where remnants of food are thrown and also the pots were thrown out. Shachiya shikohe kene ashuchi chunila gangasnan karo jai apavitra hoila. When Mother Sachi saw her son, her boy, sitting on the rejected pots, she protested, why have you touched these untouchable pots? You have now become impure. Go and bathe in the Ganga. <laughs> Ganga snan koro, koro jai. Mm. Apavitra. And the question word, kene, why? Mm. Chunila, why are you why have you touched this unclean place? So from an early age, um, children of Brahmins would be learning what is clean and what is what is suchi, what is asuchi. Uh, I've heard it said that one of the first things that very small children are taught, um, Brahminical children is, how to control their feet, where to put their feet and where not to put their feet. Ihashuni matake kohila brahmagyan vismita hoya mata koraila snan. Yeah, incidentally, it's also said one should not. Um, how to say, we, we like I'm I'm inclined sometimes if there's a pillow on the floor, maybe I want to move it, so I'll just shove it with my foot and uh, shove it to the side, you know. And but it's said strictly speaking, a Brahminical person would not do this, you know. You don't move things with your feet, you pick it up with your hands and move it. Yeah. Uh, I think the idea is that the feet, except for walking, <laughs> uh, anything else, basically anything else we do with our feet than walking on them is considered disrespectful. Yeah. Okay, iha shuni mata ke kohila brahmagyan vismita hoya mata korila snan korayila snan. Hearing this, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught his mother about absolute knowledge. Although amazed by this, his mother forced him to take a bath. Okay, then we have in the purport uh, a translation from uh, the commentary of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur as follows. The Lord said, Mother, that this is pure and that is impure is surely a worldly sentiment with no basis in fact. You have cooked food for Lord Vishnu within these pots and offered the food to him. 
How then can these parts be untouchable? Huh? Everything in relationship with Vishnu is to be considered an expansion of Vishnu's energy. Vishnu, the super soul, is eternal and uncontaminated. How then may these pots be considered pure or impure? Hearing this discourse on absolute knowledge, his mother was very much astonished and forced him to take a bath. <laughs> So despite all the uh, exalted philosophy, uh, Sachimata says, that's all very nice, but go take a bath. So she's asserting her authority. Uh, okay. Let's stop there and... Somya Karani, you, you would like to add something to our earlier discussion? Uh, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Do you hear me, Guru Maharaj? I do. Hare Krishna. Uh, actually, actually, um, Vira Lalita talked about it already a little, and you too, and what struck me in this uh, video what you sent i first didn't uh, haven't noticed yet an odari janani uh, 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 pointed my attention to it um uh, what 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 struck me is how this uh, instructor actually at some point he admitted that not he was the one who was helping but he was healed cured by the example of these mothers and children, and he told they cured me by their, mm. not by by their effort, by their process, and yeah. uh, that I can even relate a little bit to your question: how to connect it to Easter, because um, when we are uh, teachers, instructors, helpers, it is almost inevitable that at some. Uh, really really you know at some point we um discover that the, the one who we are helping or teaching or trying to give something they take somehow the position of those who are helping teaching <laughs> yeah. giving some something us and that point is always very um touching very pure very special like mm -hmm. this easter moment mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what i wanted to add oh okay thank you yeah that's very nice yeah the teacher becomes the student yes <laughs> <laughs> and this i i i regularly uh experience it in my work at school I work mm -hmm. with adolescents. Sometimes it can yeah. be rather challenging. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, when I heard this man talking about uh, these mothers and children healing him, I thought, yes, I, I do understand what you mean. Because sometimes these adolescents who seem to be uh, difficult and uh, they also te teach me a lot. Mm. In, in a profound way. Interesting. Uh, to tie that in a bit, kind of tangentially, but I've always been struck how uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Das, emphasizes how Mahaprabhu appreciates um, how he has um, learned from so many others. Uh, specifically in Antyalila chapter 7, he's speaking with Vallabha, Vallabha Charya. And Vallabha is, um, according to Krishnadas Kaviraj, he's showing a bit of pride. And Mahaprabhu wants to, uh, in a gentle and respectful way, he wants to 
help Valavacharya um, appreciate what it means to be humble. Uh, Valavacharya is a big acharya. He's a very learned scholar and so on. And so Mahaprabhu says, well, um, as for me, I can just say how much I've learned from these devotees. And then he he mentions several names and he uh, tells what it is that he has learned from them. And so he's giving credit to his own, um, well, his students, not necessarily his students, but to others, in, um, including, of course, Ramananda Roy. And uh, he mentions several. Advaita Charya is mentioned. These are senior. Advaita Charya is senior. Um, but just he's, I guess what, what I want to say is uh, Mahaprabhu is recognizing a community of learning. <clears throat> Um, yeah, that's my thought. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Thank Good. you, Gurudeva. Um, I think at this point, anybody have anything else you want to share? Oh, I wanted to also, I, I should have mentioned, uh, let's see, is she with us now? Um, yeah, Padma Manjari, you are here. Uh, we let us also, how is, how is your good husband doing? If you want to say something, uh, he's also been in the hospital. I don't know if he's still there. Uh, I don't know if she is listening. Apparently not. Okay. Hadai Pandit in uh, Helsinki has been undergoing some ordeal as well for his health. So we want to wish him the best of recovery. Uh, Munindragana and Bhakta Bjorn. Hare Krishna. And Subha. Look, it's a threesome. What's up? Hare Krishna, Guru Deva, please accept our humble obeisances. Guru Mahatri wanted to ask your blessing. Um, for uh, some time ago, uh, Govinda Dev Prabhu, our temple president, is in Hachalam, and also bring the Ranya Bhupal Prabhu, uh, was asking myself to, to start with more studies that I can teach for the future. And I know Guru much for some years ago, you asked me for uh, to study Bhakti Bhai Vava or to teach Bhakti Shastri. Uh -huh. And now they, they asked me that I can do it. And now I feel the time is more right and I'm more ready for it. And with your <laughs> blessing, the blessing yeah. of the... Very good. But, um, uh, yes, all blessings. You... You've already done Bhakti Shastri, right? Yes, so much. And uh, so you will you will be teaching Bhakti Shastri? Uh, no. Pat Prabhu asked me maybe for next year. Now I need all the uh, certifications for it and the exams. To, uh, um, for yeah. Bhakti Shastri? for to teach Bhakti Shastri. Yeah. Uh, and okay. But course, all the courses. And other courses. Good. Okay. Yes. Learn something and teach it to others. Right. And also, <laughs> so for Bhakti Lalaba, we also started, especially uh -huh. also because this uh, Mahavidyalaya school year, and soon we will also start Bhakti Lalaba, and there we also uh, we start soon also Subhai Bhupa Prabhu. And maybe hopefully we are not also maybe now not, but uh -huh. very good. Okay. 
all power to you. Power to the people. <laughs> power, power to the prema. <laughs> Good. Very good. Let's. Huh? Okay. Let's end with a short poem by Surdas. It goes like this. I I try not to read too fast. Wife of Nanda, behold that beautiful face. It steals the brilliance of an autumn night full moon with all its numberless beams. Tremulous tears, that means shaking tears, spill from the eyes of your lovely master Gopal. As dewdrops might spatter from a trembling lotus torn by an enemy from its roots. <laughs> Golden earrings in crocodile shapes glisten. Jewel studded from his ears. They seem to be twin suns, hurtling from heaven to rescue a friend. His twisted curls are like a swarm of bees gathered in hopes of waging a battle against one who invades the beauty of his face. How can Suraj, that is Sur, Surdas, capture it in words? And in the Braj language, it goes Mush Chabi. Deshi ho nand garani mush chabi sharada nish shab angsh aganit indu aba parani mush chabi lalita shri gopala lochan lola asu darani mush chabi manahu barij bilashi bib uh, Bibram Pare Parabas Parani Mushchavi Kanak Manimai Makara Kunjala Jyoti Jagamaga uh, Karani Mushchavi Mitra Mochana Manahu Aye Tarala Gati Dve Tarani Mushchavi uh, Kutil Kuntala Madhupa Milijanu uh, Kiyao Chahata Larani Mushchavi Badana Kranti uh, Birudha Sobha Korata Suraj Barani Mushchavi <laughs> Surdas Ki Jai Shri Nanda Nandana Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Um, that's it for this week. And next week, where are we next week? Uh, mm -mm. Yes, next week should be okay. We can have another gathering. So you're all welcome to come. And bring your friends. <laughs> so have a good week. Chant and be happy. Keep safe and sane. And and make it all worthwhile. Okay.
Srila Prabhupada ki jai ananta koti ananda ki jai gor prem anande hari 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 Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glories to the devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.